Ugandan opposition is accusing longtime President Yoweri Museveni of using killings and torture to curb support for the opposition. Museveni, 71, has ruled Uganda for nearly 30 years and is seeking yet another five-year term. Former Prime Minister Amaman Babazi, one of the campaign frontrunners, claims nine of his supporters have been assaulted, arrested, made to disappear and even killed. Rights groups have long accused Museveni's government of using illegal arrests, beatings and other forms of torture by security personnel to intimidate opposition supporters. In its latest report, Human Rights Watch says the Ugandan government and ruling party officials are also intimidating and threatening journalists and activists in an effort to limit criticism of the government. But the government has not commented on the latest allegations. Well, for more insight into the Ugandan situation, I'm joined via Skype from Kampala by Maria Barnett, Senior Researcher, Human Rights Watch. Uh, Maria, uh, first, uh, you know, we've heard about uh, human rights violations, uh, complaints in Uganda for a long time. Are, th are things the same or are things getting worse? Well, it's hard to say when you look at the situation over 30 years, but certainly as elections get closer, there is an increased sense of tension. Uh, you know, we saw some skirmishes and clashes between different supporters before the new year. So I th my sense is that things here remain tense. People are hopeful that this situation, that the election can happen uh, free from violence. Uh, but obviously, uh, during the last elections, the campaigns and elections themselves were generally free of violence. And then it was in April that there was violence after there were anti-government protests for inflation prices. So we shall see. Now, in your report, you say there's a, a, a very deliberate targeting of journalists and particularly those who write or uh, broadcast in the vernacular, in Ugandan languages. Why are they very critical in this campaign? Well, I think it's important that when we talk about free expression and a free media in any country, we look at where the vast majority of voters are getting their information. And Kampala, the capital, does have a generally speaking free press. You can express divergent views in the print media in English. Um, we've certainly seen media houses suffer from government uh, attacks over the years. There were four radio stations pulled off air in 2009. We saw the shutdown of one of the major independent newspapers, the Daily Monitor, in 2013. But generally, it's possible to criticize the government and the president in Kampala, there's no doubt. Up country, the situation remains, you know, different. The vast majority of voters are based up country. Many of them don't uh, read in English. They get their news in local languages. Uganda has many local languages, and the situation there is quite different. There, you know, we did 170 interviews across eight different towns, and we found time and time again that journalists, media managers, station managers face visits from district police commanders, resident and district intelligence officers, and resident district commissioners who represent the president in every district, um, trying to dissuade them, intimidating them, and obstructing uh, their reporting, yes. particularly to give the opposition a platform on certain issues. Now, Maria, very quickly, uh, would you say the conditions on the ground uh, lend the situation to a free and fair elections? It's a very challenging environment here. Clearly, the incumbent has an incredibly strong running head start uh, and a lot of access to state power. So it is a very difficult environment for free and fair elections. We certainly hope that we shall see them, but I think this is a challenging environment, no doubt. Thank you very much, uh, Maria, for your insights. Thank you, Vincent. Well, Maria Burnett, uh, Senior Researcher for Africa with uh, Human Rights Watch.